and we're continuing to paint on the R.I.P. character of Yova. So Yova's miniature. Last time we did the leather, we did the blues of the pants and the tunic, we did the face. Now we will continue with the armor, the next kind of layer of stuff. We're going to speed up the camera so we can get through this. Keep your viewing time as minimal as possible. If you are watching while you're at work or you're on a commute, hopefully it's hands-free. But hope you enjoy it. At some point, I'm going to start putting music in these videos in the background as well. But that's for another time. Maybe in the final one where we show all of the miniatures together, we'll do that. Put some music in so it's a little more enjoyable. I don't know. Maybe it'll be on this one. If you're hearing music, that means we got it done. But for the armor, let's jump into how we're going to paint this. We are going to start with a base coat of a deep gray. And this character is kind of interesting, the miniature, the sculpt, because there is a, they're wearing a breastplate with pauldrons and chain shirt. So the chain shirt has sleeves and the I hate to say skirt, but that's what it is. It's a chain skirt that goes down past the waist. And the breastplate, we're going to paint them all the same color, as well as some other bits on the character, on the miniature. And here it gets a little challenging because of that Olivia Newton-John hair. While it is gorgeously sculpted and has a lot of body and volume to it, it does make getting into the pauldrons making sure that we get all of the metal that is sculpted in, painted, can be a little challenging. You gotta watch and see where does the hair break and kind of allow little windows of those pauldrons to shine through. But you can always overpaint because when you paint the hair, you'll cover up anything that you paint of the hair from the gray. And this process is just, we're going to be doing a non-metallic metal. And you've seen it in a couple of the other videos, no real big changes. Probably the biggest change is we're not starting with a black or a near black and highlighting up. This one I'm going to do a little bit different, starting with this deep gray. We're then going to wash it to bring it down and then jump right back to the mid gray and highlight up. But the sword, we're going to do the same way. Again, Yolva is not going to be joining us on the gaming table. This one is just going to be given to the player. And because the player is also a miniature painter and has painted a fantastic paint job on Uric the Goblin, who is Yolva's replacement, some little bits here and there, the bottom of the scabbard, that tip, as well as the upper part of the scabbard right below the hilt of the second sword. I always thought that was kind of interesting. Most miniatures have either an empty scabbard or their sword in the scabbard. This miniature has a sword in a scabbard and is holding a sword. Uh, one of the very few sculpts that that does this, that doesn't have a second scabbard or anything like that. So it makes me think of Mad Mardigan and Willow when he uses everybody else's sword before unsheathing his when they are battling at the ruins of Tira's Lean. Kind of interesting. Just a fun fact. But just doing some little bits of gray. We're going to let those dry. Then when we come back to it, we are going to use a black wash and with the black wash the goal is for that to get in and give deep shadows into all of the chain and that of course is going to set us up for our deepest color that will then highlight up from so this is just black wash that we're going to apply to everything and then highlight up and I've slowed this section down just so you can see 
trying to be very careful with this wash because wash runs everywhere. You really have to have good brush control. You want to make sure that you're only putting the wash right where you need it. Otherwise, it does run everywhere and you have to use a dry brush basically to soak it up and get it off the mini as fast as possible. And onto the pauldrons and the bits of breastplate that's showing. And everywhere we can. That area there in between the hilt of the sword and the arm is a super challenging one to get to. So a tough one. Definitely a tough one. And just laying a good wash down. That will sink into the chains, give that deepest shadow, and darken that already pretty pretty dark gray. But that will allow us to build up very brightly from there. And into this chain sleeve, we'll also put this on the sword's blade so that everything will receive it. And we'll speed this up just so we don't have too long of a time and just get everything nice and washed with that black and then of course because it's a very thin wash we have to set it down and let it completely dry always fun and we won't make you watch paint dry once it's completely dry then we can go through and start highlighting this gray you can see tonally how it's gotten very deep in tone. This is just going back to the gray we had established for the sword. We're going to do offset highlights and those will flow kind of opposite each other from plane to plane. Highlight to the top as well as on that underside to the bottom for reflected light. And you've seen this done with several other miniatures, Dave and Jaw and so many. And then with the armor we're going to highlight to the top and also to the bottom also showing direct as well as reflected highlights and this is kind of how we do hair as well uh, you always do the uppermost part so like the crown and then the ends uh, it really gives it good um, good body and volume makes it looks realistic of course this hair because it's so wavy and curled and it's got so much sculpted into it we'll we'll have to do that very differently however that's for a different video we're working on armor today so highlighting with the gray getting into the pauldron into the breastplate uh, both the front and the back chain sleeves chain skirt and the little bits on the scabbard as well as the sword blade so we've got quite a bit to cover. You'll see in this miniature here, compared to especially some of the minis like Jaw or Dave, where they were basically very similar in that they're armored and armed figures, this one actually flows pretty quickly. And I think a big part of it is because they're, this miniature is a little bit older, sculpted a little bit older, so there are bigger planes of material, not as many details. Lots of chain armor, which covers quite a bit. Um, a lot of the leather components, which we did just one single color. And we could have done a lot more, spent more time on pouches. So continuing to highlight up. Yulva is pretty interesting for the aspect of joining the party at the right time the kind of place that the party had gone into a barren dunes that were very out of place for the surrounding area the there are so many things when you're a gm that you try to keep kind of close to the vest but give clues and hints and it's interesting to see what the players and their characters kind of pick up on and don't so definitely a very challenging area and when they were going to a bit of kind of sunken ruin the party encountered 
uh, jackalwares, which in and of themselves have kind of a an important aspect in the story. They had just kind of acquired some goods from the trails and had some powerful artifacts because the party was not quick to surrender to them they unleashed with full fury one of them was transporting for their master a rod of disintegration and used the full last charge on Yulva it destroyed the rod which kind of was unfortunate had the players received the rod it would have come in handy because it has a opportunity to recharge certain number of charges each day but it was the last charge and I rolled really poorly so the rod actually destroyed itself but the disintegration ray hit Yolva square in the chest and disintegrated Yolva the paladin jaw of course had wanted to do a revivify but the damage was so massive that there was no opportunity to raise Yolva. And the player had to quickly pull out their backup character. So that is the story of the death of Yolva, the first character death in this campaign. So rest in peace, Yolva. Hope this miniature does you proud. And you can see as we continue to highlight just lighter and lighter shades of gray and as we lay these in you'll see especially on the blade kind of that offset highlighting technique of course non-metallic metals I prefer over metallic metals and it is definitely a little more challenging because you have to do so much more to get the colors just right but following suit on all of the armor so the chain the breastplate the pauldrons the sword even the little bits using the same tones and this gray has just a touch of blue in it to kind of augment that blue color so still keeping in line with the player's favorite color of blue and again, the highlighting technique, we highlight directly up. For player characters, I try to keep the light source as if it were directly overhead. So also with the highlighting on that chain skirt, treating it just like hair. You want the highlights at the highest point where the light would hit it, as well as the lowest point. That way it gives it good body. With the sword, again, you'll be able to really see the highlighting technique in the sword as we get it closer and closer to done. And I still have challenges with my non-metallic metal. How fast do you go from the deepest shade to the lightest shade? Um, one of the easiest things you can do is actually look around for metal pieces and see how it plays in different light. So I try to do that in kind of case studies as I can. And you could do different things with this. Put the decorative bit on the scabbard. We could make that a non-metallic metal gold. Um, you could also put jewels in it because it has three little like bits inside that we could make jewels or gems and gets a little foggy here I apologize it's just because my hand is closer to the camera as I paint but just continuing up to those lighter shades just to get it up to where we get pure white and with all these little bits it is kind of nice using the same color just because we get so much of the miniature done in one fell swoop and again some of that is the way the miniature was sculpted with a lot of parts and pieces being the same material and close together 
taking up big aspects of the miniature. So this miniature actually goes fairly fast, kind of like Dazon. Um, a lot of the miniature having the same type of material and everything, and even Della as well, though we did a little bit different paint scheme with the rainbow interior of his robes. That was kind of the non-metallic metal aspect to where we spent a little more time doing something a little more creative on the inside of Dell's robe. And one of the interesting things on Yolva with the backstory the player provided for the character of trying to collect wealth to be able to get their own ship um, in uh, this one here, they're actually one of the things I built in to the finale as we get closer to it. Of course, we do have still quite a ways of the game to go. The characters are just now level 6. This campaign is designed to run to level 10, so they still have some ways to go, but the amount of treasure that they'll receive at the end definitely would allow Yulva to be able to get that ship. So it'll be interesting to see in the epilogue what all of the characters plan to do with the rewards that they get at the end of this campaign. Because of course that isn't the end of their characters, just the end of the campaign story. So it'll be very interesting to see do they stay together? Do they separate out? And all of that good stuff. Now the new character who has taken Yolva's place in the party, Uric the Goblin, again kind of interesting because the character built into the backstory, the party had encountered goblins before and the character of Uric kind of followed the party for a while after that encounter. Had the party gone into the goblin caves, the caverns, uh, it would have been interesting to see kind of how they would have it dealt with the goblin aspect of this campaign. So the goblins have quite a bit. Maybe in the next video we'll go into some of that. But as for this video, we've got the highlights done. Yolva coming along very, very well, getting close to being done on this one. So overall, I'm pretty happy with it. I hope the player is as well. I think colors and techniques are working pretty good. And Yolva getting closer and closer to being done. Just about completed with our party. We have one more player to do after Yolva. We'll see you then.